Greetings all, this is Dickie Adams with PocketNow.com and today we're going to finish up our Kindle Fire review and take a look at it against other tablets in the market today. So sit back, relax, enjoy the show. Let's talk first about the Amazon Kindle Fire and the HTC Flyer from T-Mobile, both of which have a similar form factor and screen size. The one item that the HTC Flyer has over the Kindle Fire is the inclusion of a front-facing and rear-facing camera, plus the digitized pin functionality. I also like the way that HTC implemented this back grip section, not up here, but down here. So when you're holding on to it from this angle, you've got a little something to hold on to, or even in this format. What I don't like, although it is an, a neat function, is this moving, rotating buttons here uh, because oftentimes when you rotate it here, you're pressing a button that you didn't mean to press, thus causing interaction that you didn't want. But otherwise, screen brightness and color differential, not a whole lot of difference between here. This does have an internal cell uh, radio so it can uh, access the internet without having direct access to somebody else's Wi-Fi, whereas the Kindle Fire just has Wi-Fi in it. Both of them scroll up and down fairly smoothly, uh, although we're looking at a slightly different uh, formatted version here between the two of these. The I uh, really haven't had too many problems between the two devices. I'm using a different browser though here between them. The I haven't found a whole lot of difference between the browser of the Amazon Silk versus, say, Dolphin Mini, which is what I'm using here on the HTC Flyer. What I have noticed, uh, though, is that in the update for the Kindle Fire that just came out recently, the screen touches and presses and interaction have been much smoother, even to the uh, fact that I haven't really rerouted the device since I updated it to this latest version. I believe it's 6.2.1. So let's take a look at another device here. Moving on to the much larger Galaxy Tab 10.1 from Verizon. Again, Inclusion of front-facing and rear-facing camera and a cell radio gives this some advantages over the Kindle Fire. It is uh, noticeably thinner than the Kindle Fire and feels a little bit lighter in the hands, uh, mostly from the way that the, the device is laid out. Uh, the button here, again, on the Galaxy Tab does get in the way when you're turning the device, have a tendency to power it off accidentally while you're typing items. Uh, this is a very fast device. You can see the scrolling is very smooth here, even on the default browser compared to the slight chunkiness here that we have on the Kindle Fire. But again, this device is more oriented towards a large tablet, uh, whereas the Kindle Fire is definitely oriented towards more on the book end reading, uh, some video content that is available through the Amazon service or watching your own. I haven't had too many problems between the two, but I, again, I, as far as form factor is concerned, I would rather carry around a seven inch version for reading books but I would rather have a large screen version for viewing videos or reading large documents, large PDFs. There's a lot of pinching and zooming that has to happen on the Kindle Fire versus a large 10.1 inch device such as this Galaxy Tab. And then we move on to the big boy in the game, the iPad 2 versus the Kindle Fire. Again, we got front and rear facing cameras, although they're not very good. Uh, the speed at which the browser works is very fast. Really the, the iPad is kind of the cream of the crop here still in as far as uh, high-end tablets go. Regardless of what a lot of the Android tablets can do, the iPad 2 simply just works. It just works well and works efficiently and hardly ever have problems with it. But when reading books on a 10.1 inch device such as this, holding onto the device, even with a case on it, and it's a little bit slippery here, it, while it's lightweight and it feels nice in the hands, after a few hours of using it to read, it does become tiresome, uh, and the edges have a tendency to start uh, leaving marks on the inside of your palms. Versus the Kindle Fire, which is very lightweight, and I do find myself using this device around the house more for reading purposes, if it's a book or a comic book, even though this is a better format for comic book reading. But as far as ecosystems are concerned, this is the, the closest comparison. The other two Android tab tablets we've looked at don't really have an ecosystem to back them up other than the Google uh, package. 
these two are the closest because Apple has its own built-in ecosystem for apps and for video content, books, etc., etc. Although you can add in your own stuff and cross-link some of that stuff together. And Amazon has its own backend as well that allows you to get access to books and apps and so on and so forth. And I tell you that the that makes a large difference in what people are going to think of the Kindle Fire against the iPad. There's really no comparison here. If, if you really want to spend the money and you want a high-end tablet that's going to last you for a long time and going to just work well all the time, you're probably looking at the iPad too. But on a budget, or if you just want a 7-inch tablet, the Kindle Fire does a remarkable job for the money. And most people I've talked to who have received Kindle Fires over the last few months or have you know, seen them or touched them, that sort of thing, have been really impressed with the functionality for $200 versus the four to $500, depending on what model you're getting. Now, this is the Wi-Fi only model. This is Wi-Fi only as well. So the reality is, if you got one of these in your Christmas stocking, Kindle Fire, speaking of, you're going to love it. it if you're a tinkerer and hacker, there are ways to work around it, uh, to add more functionality or load up uh, CM7, or even they're working on ice cream sandwich, which is great, but it kind of takes away from what this device is intended to be, which is a simple, consumable object. Amazon's been very clear, and we've mentioned this in the other videos, that this is not intended to be necessarily a tablet per se. It's intended to access content, kind of like what the iPad uh, lineup has done and the iPod Touch as well. So that kind of gives you a clue on uh, what to expect from the differences between them. In all, I would say that if you're in the market for a tablet device in the holiday season or even to the start of the year, the Kindle Fire is an excellent low-priced alternative to the iPad kind of market that that's out there. There aren't as many good apps. I just found one music app recently and it wasn't even compatible with the Kindle Fire for the Android market. The iPad does that much better on all counts. But if you just simply want something for reading and for viewing invasional content, maybe showing off some pictures, $200 is not bad for a price for a tablet that's built as heartily and structurally sound as the Kindle Fire. And really, again, with that 6.2.1 update that recently came out, this device operates even more efficiently than it had before, and I can't recommend it highly enough. That wraps up our coverage of the Kindle Fire, specifically in the comparison video. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below, and we'll try to cover them in answers to those comments. Give us a thumbs up if you like this video, and thanks for watching.